For me anymore, it's actually less about playing than it is about the social elements of it. Um, the game itself is is very different from most games and draws in a persona that is very different than what you find in the broader board game community. I guess I say. I mean, there are there are some people here who you know play other board games and are, do other things. There are also people here who they play diplomacy and they don't play anything else. Um, in some ways, there's more similar with the kind of people who play poker or you know certain. Um, athletic events, you know, than uh, like rugby, um, than most board games, and it's a lot of it is because of the psychology involved. It's not a you know, one; it's not a game of chance. In two, it's not even a real strategy game. Um, most, you know, if you go into a store, you know, a game store that sells these kind of things, some place where you could actually buy um, this product, you'd find it on the shelf alongside a lot of traditional board games and other strategy games, and you know, maybe some. You know, um, easier family games, and in a way that's actually completely wrong, because it's it's not about the board; it's about the people you're sitting with. I mean, there's an old adage in, in poker that it doesn't matter what my cards are; what matters is what your cards are. And diplomacy is exactly the same way. There are guys here who are who are, and I'm not going to name names, but there's guys here who are fabulous players and have been extremely successful, and are actually horrible at the tactics. I mean, they they will still, after 20 years of playing, accept where provinces are and write orders that are illegal. And, and in the long run, they still do great. And the reason is because it doesn't matter what my orders are, what matters is, what can I get you to do? And if I can get you to do what I want you to do, it doesn't matter what I do. You know, the game will simply fall into my lap if I can get everyone else in the table to do the things that I want them to do. And that's really what the game is all about. Um, is that when, that's why you see, you see a lot of you know, salesmen, you see a lot of lawyers, and, um, along with um, you know assortment of scientists and mathematicians and that kind of thing also who are a little usually stereotypically a little more interested in the the tactical and strategic aspects and then you've got the you know the quote unquote classic diplomats who are like I said you know lawyers and salesmen and, and a lot of students and and in fact actually a handful of actual diplomats so <laughs> there's a there's a lot of players here that play online there's yeah. a, there's two different types of players the ones that love the face to face game the ones that love the online one. And uh, there's sort of a hazy boundary between them where they cross, but yeah. uh, you know they, they love they love their their genre. Um, yeah, I um, that's true. A lot of people, myself included, actually started out as on well, those players in my generation, I guess I'll say. Um, I've been a lot of them started out playing online. Um, the original um, electronic protocols to play were written. In the early 1990s, um, a number of, that's actually before the web really existed, um, there were these what were called judges that were set up on servers and you emailed back and forth to the computer to submit orders. Um, and then occasionally there would be just you know, human adjudicated games too with some guy, you know, some people email him and he sends orders back. Um, when, you know, when email came into widespread use, that actually was a really significant boom for the diplomacy hobby generally because a lot of people who otherwise wouldn't have played, suddenly got to start playing. Um, and some of those people slowly migrated over to the face-to-face -face world. Because, I mean, it's, the thing about diplomacy is you've got to have seven people. If you don't have seven people, you know, you can play variants, but it's, it's a vastly inferior game. If you don't actually have seven people there, you don't actually have some time to spend on it. Whereas with email, you can take your time, you can submit orders every few days, and so on, you know. And so it works very well for a lot of people. Any, uh, any recommendations to anyone? Uh, if they want to look into the game, pick up the game, yeah, I mean, the easiest thing to do is, is to check it out online initially. That's a very easy, you know, low-cost, low-stress way to do it. Um, if you're interested in finding out more about the hobby generally, um, there's a number of great websites. Uh, www.diplom.org is one. Uh, Diplomaticcore.org is one. Um, if you're in Europe, uh, there's a website. I think it's uh, eurodip.eu. Um, there's an organization in Australia called Dan's, D-A-A-N-Z, which uh, if you don't recall the URL offhand, but if you Google Dan's, you'll you'll find it. Um, yeah, any you know those are sort of some of the major face-to-face -face organizations. Um, once you sort of come across one, you can come across another. But there's actually there's literally literally hundreds of websites out there for various diplomacy organizations around the world. You know, some big ones, some little ones. There's a number of online zines uh, that people have published about it. Um, yeah, it's very very easy to find. But checking it out online, if you know if you've never played, is a good way to kind of start out and get a feel for it and see what you like. Yeah. Um, and you know, you may love it, and you may hate it. I've uh, 
one of the interesting things about diplomacy is, as far as the appeal of it to people is that I, I, I've seen some ratings on um, a number of general board game websites where people post comments and say, I like this game, I don't like this game. With most games, it's a pretty sharp bell curve. You know, if you rate them from 1 to 10, you get this nice shaped bell curve. There's lots of people who say, yeah, give it a 6, give it a 7, give it an 8. It's a good game, I like it pretty well. And, you know, there's a few people who, a few people who really love it, a few people who really hate it. Diplomacy is, is much, much flatter. And by that I mean there are lots of 10s and there are lots of 2s. <laughs> it, it's very much more so than most games, one that you, you may absolutely fall in love with or you may absolutely detest. Um, and that's, that's very, always been very interesting to me. But I understand why. It's, it's emotionally very difficult for a lot of people. It's beyond the practical considerations, time, and space limitations, and having to have some people. It's, it can be very stressful. Um, it can be very emotionally taxing. And you have to, you have to be able to handle losing. Um, you know, I don't care how good you are, you know, you're the best player in the world, you're going to just get crushed a lot of days. And there's nothing you can do about it. And you just have, you know, it's like, you know, it's like in baseball, you know, I mean, you, you might win 100 games and that's a great season, but you're still going to lose 60. And this is a lot like that. You're going to lose a lot of games. And if you can't handle sitting down at a table, table pouring your heart out for eight hours and walking away with nothing, um, it may not be your cup of tea. But if, if you, you know, just enjoy the challenge and enjoy the camaraderie hanging out with the other players and learning, and especially you know, especially learning from the guys who are better than you, because frankly that's the best way to learn. The best way to learn is to come out, play with the best people, absolutely clobbered. And um, you sort of slowly figure it out and say, yep, that's something I did wrong today. And then you come back the next day and you know, take your licks and see if you can do a little better. Excellent. It's a great tournament you guys put together. Yeah, it's fabulous. It's been a wonderful experience. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled that we did this. It's a great location. Um, University of British Columbia was were very good hosts. I appreciated that. They were, they were very cooperative and the local hobby up here was very, very, very helpful. So uh, I'm pretty happy keeping our fingers crossed for another six hours here and uh, see if we can get out of this. Okay. Maybe see you next year. Oh yeah. Yeah. We'll see you somewhere. <laughs> see you somewhere. Yeah. Maybe in Austria. Awesome. awesome. All right. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Man. It was awful.